stand, say the Pledge of Allegiance, and have a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. start our meeting that our um, part of our reopening policy that we talk about frequently and have revisited and will continue to is that we are to wear face coverings uh, indoors unless we are able to be six feet apart from one another and um, facing that same direction and so that is our policy and um, that's why you may see some people who if they are within the policy if they choose to remove their mask but they are six feet away that's fine. If at any time you are not able to be that, then you need to put your mask on. Um, let's see. We'll start with the approval of claims. We have um, two dockets. One is claims from September 21st, 2021 to September 30th, 2021. Those are numbers 19,903 to 19,912, totaling $660,381.84 and claims for October 1st, 2021 through October 18th, 2021, which are claim numbers 19,913 through 20,103, totaling $376,438.78, excuse me, 71 cents. If it's advisable with the board, we will continue to go through um, the rest of the financials before we vote. So we have, Two payrolls as well. Payroll claim for September 24th, 2021 is $434,201.39. Payroll claim for October 5th, 2021 is $460,135.11. Um, any questions about the claims report or papers? Okay, then Todd, the funds reports, please. In September, the Education Fund, we had receipts of $1,053,973.57 and expenses of $950,913.57. Cash balance at the end of September was one million, is $1,326,438.82. Debt service fund, we had receipts of $5,991.26. There were no expenses. Our cash balance at the end of September in the debt service fund is $1,569,664.37. And in the operation fund, we had receipts of $7,273.54. Expenses of $321,450.87 and our cash balance at the end of September was $1,024,316.37. Any questions or comments from the board for Todd? Okay. If so, I will take a motion to approve um, the financial reports, including claims, payrolls, and funds report. So moved. Motion by Katie. I'll second. Second by Joe. Any further discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries 5-0. Now, the 2022 budget adoption. So we've gone through the process, and this is almost the final leg in the process. Something in particular you want, Jana, or you or Todd want to mention? Not unless there are specific questions. and. You're correct. It, uh, if this passes uh, this evening, then our next step or final step is to load it up onto Gateway. And for anybody who may be uh, in the audience or listening, anytime you want to check out any government entity, you can get on Gateway and see all of uh, the budgets for any government uh, unit. But pretty straightforward, and we've been working closely with them, and I believe we're ready. Any questions for the board. I know we've talked at this, about this at multiple meetings, but just okay. 
not, I will entertain a motion to approve the 2022 budget. Second. Motion by Joe. Second. Second by Katie. Any further discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries 5-0. Along with that is the Capital Projects Fund plan, re plan resolution, um, and that is, again, part of the budget. These are maintenance and building kinds of things. Any questions from the board? Any further comment that you have, Janet, on that? If not, I will entertain a motion to approve the 2022 Capital Projects Fund. So moved. Motion by Joe. Second. Second by Casey. Any further discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries 5 0. And last in that area, the 2022 bus replacement plan. Any questions, concerns, any further things to ask? No, I would just say in any of this, if anybody ever has questions, please don't hesitate <coughs> to contact Todd or myself to answer questions. We want to make sure that everybody understands. And uh, with Kevin here in the audience, just want to thank him for his work. He's very much an integral part of uh, the bus replacement plan and has been working closely with Todd and just want to thank him for his service and his input on this as well. Right, do I have a motion to approve the 2022 bus replacement plan? So moved. Motion by Casey. Second. Second by Katie. Any further discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand, please. Motion carries 5-0. Okay, then we have some consent items. The minutes of the September 20th, 2021 executive session and regular meeting public hearing. Minutes of the October 10th, 2021 study session. What's those two things? Actually three, because there's three parts of that. Um, I know that this was at a time of transition with um, a position in our corporation that takes the minutes. So I did want to mention when I was looking through that for the executive session, we need a certification page. So something to sign off and say that we um, certify that we only talked about what was in that. I haven't seen those, Jenny, and I do the minutes for the executive session. I, nobody's talked to me about that. Well, that's actually, since there's not really minutes from the executive session, that was something always that Julie would just have the page to have us sign. Okay. But I'm sure just in that transition there that that was. Okay, thank you. And I did see that we were missing the attendees on one of the meetings. I think it was maybe the study session. Um, again, I know there was a lot going on, and I think that was the study session that I wasn't here, so I'm not sure who the attendees were. And the regular meeting, it has just the board members that were here instead of everyone. I think we sent around a um, we sent around a sign up sheet, and I never got it from last time. And look at you. <laughs> <laughs> I got the Zoom one. I don't know what happened to the. We do have the executive session list. Okay, but, we, but the stu did you not get a, a sign up sheet? Went around. I think Skeeter passed it out. Where are Skeeter? Where did it end up, you know? Turn it back in. So we can find that. That's just okay. something that yeah. we can add add to those. But yeah, because it's been you know two weeks and I, yeah, I wouldn't want to try and create who was there even in It does time. exist. Yeah. I'll say that. It does exist. Okay, thank you. We have it. All right. <laughs> we'll work on it. Call me. We'll work on it. <laughs> was there anything else that <laughs> okay. That's why we have each other with the Okay. If not, I will entertain a motion to accept those with those corrections. So moved. Motion by Joe. Second. Second by Casey. Any other further discussion? Okay. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion carries 5 0. So these policies were discussed at the study session, but we'll call this the first reading. 2221, 2262, 2263, .01, 31, 31, 53, 30, 53, 50, and 5730. Amber did a great job posting on the board docs and posted the actual policies to go with those numbers. And so anyone who um, is interested in reading 
those marked up policies, they are on zebras.net, go to board, go to public information, on tonight's meeting, on the agenda, and you'll find them. So, was there any questions about any of those specific ones? I believe, Scott, they're also posted just on our website as proposed, rather than having to go through, if they don't want to go through the board docs link, they're also, there's just a link on our actual our web page, too, that they can look at those. Great. Those, there weren't major decisions in those, I'm sure. Katie, yeah. obviously, and Casey covered those in the study session. Most of those were technical and very minor changes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, there's nothing that needs to be done for that right now, but we have now officially in this meeting said that that's the first reading. Um, the blind low vision contract. With um, Mrs. Schenk here, uh, and do you mind, do you want to share how this has come about? And sure. Um, we were contracting with, um, through an MOU through Wawa C for a blind low vision teacher and she was done right before fall break. So that forced us to try to look for somebody and there's just, there's nobody out there. So we ended up having to contact Indiana School for the Blind and Visually Impaired in, which is what most of the um, schools in our co-op do as well so that's how we came about this and right now we have one only have one student and we will be getting one next year as well that's transitioning from first steps so is this um, teacher under contract are they mainly as a consultant or do they come up and work with the student at well it depends on the need right now we just have a consultant they're just going to consult she will come up to see the student since um, she's never seen the student before but this particular student just needs consultation services. So, will she attend IEP conferences? Yes. Yeah. Good. Probably by Zoom since they're from Indy. Sure. Yes. She will be the teacher of record for this child. Any other questions from the board? Okay. Not. I will entertain a motion to. Um, approve the blind low vision contract. So moved. Motion by Katie. Second. Second by Casey. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion carries 5-0. Okay, and then our school calendar for next year. Jana, there's specific things you want to mention. I, I would like to, um, Thank the principals and head secretaries in our athletic department for helping us with this and then with communication with Mrs. Shally as president of our CTA. Um, I don't believe that there were any concerns of the calendar pretty much just rolled over. It's an equal split between the two semesters with 90 days each. The one thing that I would share with the board are uh, those days in second semester that we have deemed as makeup days that once we have decided on the language and gone through the negotiation process um, and both parties agree to um, the collective bargaining agreement that we may uh, come back to the board and ask that the language around makeup days be changed to better reflect what we decide within the collective bargaining agreement. Other than that, um, I think it's a pretty straightforward and essentially just a rollover of what we've done this year. Um, so, I, there is often the, then the question if we are moving to we, kind of with, with COVID, one of the silver linings, if we look at it that way, is that we were forced to be able to deploy that same day um, e-learning that had been something that many had wanted for a while. And so um, why still build in makeup days? So um, that was actually a conversation that Mrs. Shaw and I engaged in a little bit today. And I, I would respectfully say we at least need to leave those in here um, for this year. Um, and look at that moving forward for a couple of reasons. The day that the straight, straight limbs went through the district, at that point of time, we would not have been able to deploy any measure of education um, from school to what was going on in the community. That happened near the end of the academic year, and so the state allowed us to waive that day. I don't know what the state stance would have been had it happened in August or September when we had that extra time to do that. So I think it's a safeguard in that respect. Um, you're correct in that we are having to, or feel compelled to send devices home every night with students due to COVID and, and those types of concerns. It is an uh, increase of cost to the school district when we talk about iPads that are broken or um, 
that are that come up missing those types of things so I think that we need to evaluate that and what it's costing the school to do that and I would also respectfully say um, sometimes it's good just to have those three-day weekends so that everybody can decompress uh, rest those types of things as well and allows that to be built in so as it stands for this year my recommendation would be to continue to have those makeup days in there um, and we can research some of those things in regards to what happens if the community can't uh, help us uh, deploy an educational platform because of a storm that goes through those types of things. Makes a lot of sense. Any other board questions, concerns? It's wild to think we've been doing the balance calendar so long. Started when Isaac was in kindergarten, he's a junior in college now, but I think people enjoy having that break in October. Well, if there aren't any questions about that, then we'll go ahead and I'll entertain a motion to adopt the 2022-2023 school calendar. So <laughs> Motion by Joe. Second. Second by Casey. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion carries 5-0. All righty. So, Update on COVID. So Mrs. Vance, numbers, etc. I know sure. we just came back, obviously. Sure. So the last time I reported out was on October 5th, and then of course we've left for break. So these numbers would be reflective of uh, moving forward from the October 5th date. At Columbia, um, zero positive students, zero positive staff, four students who were quarantined, and those would be um, non-school related quarantines. At Riddle, uh, we have three positive students, zero positive staff, seven students are quarantined, zero staff quarantined. Rochester Middle School, zero positive students, zero positive staff, six students who are quarantined. Those would all be from outside of school uh, situations where they came into close um, proximity to a positive person, zero quarantine staff. At the high school, zero positive students, zero positive staff, nine students who are quarantined, zero quarantine staff members. As it pertains to the vaccination clinic that we offered, we had zero adults elect to um, take the vaccine here at school. We did have six students who were vaccinated and we'll, we will be doing that um, second round uh, here. And then Beth, do you know when that's scheduled for? Yeah, yes, next Friday. And I want to thank Beth, she's been working with those parents and with those students, but we have six who... If you don't mind my asking, when the Riddle and um, the Riddle kids um, and high school kids, non-school related, those quarantines are those... Yes, yes, sorry, so I apologize. Okay. Yes. Board, any questions? Um, for, for further information, as the community is, continues to be in the red, Oscar and uh, our athletic director, Kevin, we are working, uh, I have a health board meeting this week, and we'll meet with Dr. Rayburn and try to schedule a meeting as we move into winter sports and what that might mean for um, indoor uh, spectator. Uh, what that might look like so that I can bring that back to the board as well. And our next meeting is our study session on November 2nd, which would be a big, big day. But um, are, there's, there's no competitions before then indoors for the winter sports, right? Mm -hmm. No? I asked Kevin the Not same Not this thing. Saturday, but next Saturday is the girls basketball scrimmage would be the first indoor event november 4th is the first home event according to kevin well that's the first real event the yeah. scrimmage is before that i believe and a scrimmage would probably have a similar kind of attendance to a volleyball match i would assume or maybe not i, I don't know because we'll that, we did have the rules set up for volleyball but then we'll have to see how that translates 
Anything else, board? All right, we're moving to donations. So we are such a blessed community, and we are thankful for all of those organizations and people who um, donate to our schools. Columbia Elementary received a donation of 100 pumpkins from the Optimus Club for Columbia and Riddle's Fall Enrichment Festival, which thank you to our social media people. I saw some pictures about that. Uh, it looked like they were having so much fun and that it was beautiful weather, so thank you to the Optimus Club. They also, this doesn't wasn't directly to the school, but of course they had their free pick in the field this past weekend. And I heard from someone very involved in the Optimist Club who was very proud that this was going to be a bumper crop year, the best year ever. Last year was the best year ever, but this is even more the best year ever, so that's a wonderful community event. Columbia Elementary received a donation of multiple bags of clothing for the school nurse for student needs. Um, Sam is, is, I don't know, I don't want to put her on the spot, but I'm curious, would there be a way to um, have an idea about what sizes might be helpful for the nurses to have? And maybe we could put that out. I, I'm just sure. curious in case people, because people are always looking for places to donate. I wouldn't want to overwhelm our school nurses, but if that is something that is helpful. The Rochester High School received a $300 donation from the Kiwanis Club for the Key Club. Fabulous. Rochester High School received a donation from the class of 1983 in memory of classmates for the Key Club in the amount of $200. Thank you to all of those donors. Is there any other? I did donation? receive um, today a donation from the Community Presbyterian Church. It is a $610 donation and they would like for it specifically to go to our backpack food program and we'll be uh, bringing that check to us yet this week. Oh, wonderful. Thank you to the Community Presbyterian Church, $600 to the Backpack Food Program. Okay. Um, board, do I have a motion to approve the donations? So moved. Motion by Katie? Second. Second by Casey. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion carries 5-0. Then we have um, several overnight field trips. We have both from um, the wrestling team for a variety of things, and these are all traditional field trips that they have, if I'm remembering correctly. Right. And then the, if it's okay with the board, we'll take that with the FF, FFA. I had a flight canceled last week, and so FAA keeps coming <laughs> into my head. What's <laughs> FFA? Um, for state soil and um, national convention. Sure. So, so if I, I need to point out to the board that um, in regards to the FFA state convention, that uh, event has already happened um, and those uh, students um, had participated at the regional level. Uh, Justin Pearson was uncertain as to whether or not they would qualify to move on. They did move on to the state level, but the timing of that paperwork and the board meeting um, it was going to jeopardize those students not being able to participate at the state soil judging. So I used uh, an executive decision to go ahead and approve that overnight trip. The others, as, as Jenny has shared, are uh, standard trips. The FFA uh, typically goes to um, national convention every year. This year it is held in Indianapolis. And again, those by the wrestling are uh, standard trips that um, Mr. Gard just gathers all of that paperwork in one fell swoop so that we can go through that, approve that, and get those students there and buses arranged. Any questions? Okay. If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve the overnight field trips. So moved. A motion by Casey. Second. Second by Joe. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion carries 5 0. Okay. We have, as a personal report, it's kind of lengthy again, um, and it includes the uh, winter coaches. So bear with me, and I will do my best on pronouncing names. So we have hiring of Aubrey Troyer, Columbia Instructional Assistant, an hourly rate of $12. Molly Trottier as Riddle Intense Special Needs IA at an hourly rate of $14.55. Sydney Trippenfeldis, 
Riddle Special Needs Instructional Assistant, hourly rate of $12. Samantha Wally, RMS Head Secretary, hourly rate of $16.10. Tanya C, RHS Food Service Assistant, hourly rate of $14. Jeremiah Small, RHS Night Custodian, hourly rate of $12. Pay adjustments, uh, Elena Deshawn, RMS Intense Needs IA, hourly rate $12.59. Emily Holt, RMS Intense Needs IA, hourly rate of $12.59. Mary Ryder, Columbia Intense Needs IA, hourly rate of $12.59. Santha Eby, Case Conference Coordinator for Special Education, hourly rate of $14.81. Savannah Stevens, RMS Intense Need Instructional Assistant, hourly rate of $12.59. Shirley Swift, RHS Instructional Assistant, hourly rate of $15.30. Bryce Abbott, RMS football coach, stipend of $1,400. Uh, these are recommendations. It's listed under recommendations. These would be hiring recommendations as well, correct? Avery Gerwin, our RMS vocal music theater position, salary $34,600. Nate Basham, RMS sixth, seventh language arts position, salary $38,050. Ryan Klinger, RCSC bus driver, uh, would be paid route pay. Amber Reinhold, RCSC deputy treasurer, salary $36,000. Resignation, Carol Gebert, RMS vocal music theater position, effective October 11th, 2021. Fall intercession, these were paid at hourly rate. Columbia Elementary, Michelle Yeager, first grade. Jennifer Keller, kindergarten, Monday through Wednesday. And Stacia Conrad, kindergarten on Thursday. Fall intercession paid at hourly rate, Riddle Elementary, Lisa Coulter, Alexis Mascheri, and Rebecca Lee, they're all teachers, and Mandy Gerhardt as an instructional assistant. Family medical leave for Sandy Schaefer from approximately uh, September 30th until October 21st of 2021. Jessica Milton from October 12th, 2021 to January 12th, 2022. Rebecca Van Meter from September 29th, 2021 to uh, November 15th, 2021. Athletic hires Isaac Schaefer as RMS sixth grade basketball coach as a stipend of $1,023. Nate Basham as RMS seventh grade basketball coach as a stipend of $1,800. And then for winter athletics, um, these are brushed middle school coaches. Boys basketball, Dan Bailey, 8th grade, stipend of $2,168. John Walkman, 7th grade, stipend of $1,800. TJ Smith, 6th grade A team, $511.50. Nate Basham, 6th grade B team, stipend of $511.50. Abigail Overmeyer, K-2, through stipend of $900. Abigail Overmeyer, 3 through <coughs> boys and girls, stipend of $1,800. Mason Heidi and Jacob Nye, both as volunteers. Girls basketball, Jacob Nye, 8th grade, stipend $2,168. Nate Basham, 7th grade, $1,800. Isaac Schaefer, 6th grade, $1,023. And Jake Ruff as a volunteer. Wrestling Clint Guard coordinator, Bryce Roberts, head coach, stipend $900. And Tristan Wilson, assistant coach, $716. Then at the high school, Boys basketball, Rob Malco, head coach for the varsity, stipend $7,180. Tony Stasiak, assistant, $3,770. Sean Kelly, assistant, $3,770. Joe McCarter, freshman coach, stipend $2,582. And these assistants, Luke Smith, Mike Malco, Ab Abigail Obermeyer, Rex Reinholdt, Becky Lee, and Wendy Malco. On the girls basketball side, Brian Jennings, head coach, stipend $7,180. Ray Davis, assistant coach, $3,770. Phil Bowers, $3,770. Jacob Nye is the freshman coach. And uh, has volunteer um, with a stipend of $2,582. Jake Ruff and Cheryl Jennings as volunteers. Swimming, Stephanie Brown, head coach, $4,250. Erica Abbott, assistant coach, Stipend $1,973. Matt Steininger, assistant, stipend $1,973. Lisa Andrews, assistant, stipend $1,973. And volunteers, Jared Feldman, Angie Lau, and Carmen Reeves. Wrestling for the high school, Clint Guard, head coach, stipend $4,000. Tristan Wilson, assistant, stipend $1,300. Bryce, Rye, Bryce Roberts, assistant, stipend $1,300. Derek Holloway, assistant, stipend $1,000. Volunteers, Damick Hayden, and Damick Beck, Hayden Prater, 
and Drew Sailors. There was also an addition this evening for um, a Columbia Instructional Assistant, Hannah Clemens, um, and she will be hired at a starting pay rate of $12 per hour. Okay. <laughs> Any questions from the board of All right. If not, I will entertain a motion to approve this personnel report. So moved. Motion by Joe. Second. Second by Casey. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion carries 5 0. Okay. And then, if I may, I just want to thank Amber uh, for her hard work. She's been a great addition over at Central Office and is doing a really, really nice job of advocating for herself, advocating for the school, finding out answers when she doesn't know most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've really enjoyed having her over there. She's doing a wonderful job um, on a learning curve that is very steep right now. So thank you for the work you're doing. I appreciate the patience. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Welcome, Amber. Um, Okay, so the approval for a superintendent's evaluation for the Department of Education. This is something that is an important part of the job of the board, and we did have the evaluation, and um, but it needs to be approved before sent to the state in a public meeting. So, I'll just ask for approval of the, announce what the rating was. Todd, do you have the rating on you? Was it, Janet, do you remember your rating? We rated you. I do. Excellent. Highly effective. Highly effective. Yeah. Well, I didn't know if we had the exact point that we needed. We have. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's, that's okay. okay. <laughs> so we we appreciate all that Mrs. Vance has done in this very very trying time, especially of the past year and a half, and as we continue to move through. All that's changing. So, board, do I have a motion to approve Jenna's? Um, Evaluation as highly effective. So moved. Motion by Katie. Second. Second by Casey. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion carries 5-0. We'll finish off that paperwork. Thank you for keeping us on top of that. And that leaves us with superintendent business. So very quickly, just would like to share um, our intercession numbers. As Jenny shared earlier, the balance calendar is an integral part of what we do here at Rochester Schools. And part of what the balance calendar allows us to do is to help uh, identify students who may be struggling in core areas of math and English and try to um, help them get caught up rather than waiting an entire school year and bringing them back for summer school. So uh, it's, it's a huge part of what we try to do educationally. Uh, for the district and so those numbers um, I think uh, across the district were a little bit lower than normal but I think as Jenny has already shared and what everybody knows there's just a level of um, uh, being burnt out uh, in many multiple areas right now. Intercession kindergarten had 10 students, um, first grade had 10 students attend, um, in second grade we had 9 students, third grade 11 students, um, in fourth grade, there were two. Fifth grade, we had eight. Sixth grade were three. Seventh grade had four. And then at the high school, we had 17 attend uh, to work on math and, and making sure that they're in line to gain those credits and 41 in the English area at the high school. And I wanna thank Luke and Jason for their enrichment program at uh, Riddle. Um, I don't know how I managed it, but I got back, invited back to run the grill. Maybe it was to redeem myself that all of the burgers were done this time, so <laughs> thank you for that. Um, but really enjoyed the day with the students and, and watching that interaction with them out on that playground. Um, it, one of the things that this board has asked is uh, engagement with the administrative team, transparency, more public uh, interaction, those types of things. So I have four questions that I uh, want to pose to the administrative team. And then, um, Oscar, if you'd like to start, and we'll just work our way back down. But the four questions that um, all of the principals uh, have been asked to respond to would be, uh, what amazing thing has happened in the building the first nine weeks since we've been in session? Share with us what COVID looks like in your building. 
anything that you feel that the board should know? And then finally, uh, is there anything that you could ask of the board to help you or staff or your students and what would that be? So the first question was? What amazing thing is happening? <laughs> So, I mean, I could talk about the fact we're having a great football season. We got cross country and semi state. Our volleyball team had a great year. Our soccer team's had a great year. Uh, we got state soils going on. I can talk about all of those great things with our students. But the uh, thing that needs to be put first and foremost from the high school is the fact that week one, I asked all these teachers to attend what I call team meetings, and it was silence. I mean, pure silence in the room. I don't know if they've not been at team meetings, they were scared to talk in front of me or what, but today I sat in the team meeting with the senior class and I said zero words. That's a huge step for me as a, the leader of the high school. When I was at the middle school, we could have a meeting and the meeting would run itself if Cassie and I couldn't get there. We are slowly but surely getting there as a high school. That's one of our number one goals this year at the high school is for communication. So that is a huge step. Um, our teachers showing up every day fighting through the pandemic, fighting through the stressors of that um, have been phenomenal. Not just our teachers, our instructional assistants, our custodians, our kitchen staff, everybody being a part of that, uh, trying to create that family atmosphere. So that is our biggest thing that I want to brag on is, especially the senior meeting the first time, they really looked at me like, why do you care about us talking about these students? Because they're almost across the finish line. And now today we couldn't get the teachers to stop talking about the students. So that's a huge step for us in nine weeks. Uh, what does COVID look like? It looks uh, very similar to what you see in this room. Um, you know, some people walking around, sticklers with the mask, some people trying to walk around without the mask, some people walking around with the mask below their nose. Uh, it's something that the teachers are working on in the hallway daily. Um, it's a fight. I'll just be honest with you. It is a battle in the hallway and uh, our teachers are doing a phenomenal job with that. Mrs. Atkinson also walking around helping me enforce that. We hand about 200 masks out. Actually, 200 wasn't enough this morning at the front door as our kids are in the building. So 200 of 600 and, you know, 43 kids or 38 kids, whatever I have in there now, um, is what we're handing out every morning. And that doesn't count what we're handing out during the day. So that's what we are looking like there. Um, it is nice that our numbers are down though, so most of our kids are in the building, which is a huge plus. <clears throat> what I ask from the board, trust and support. When the one parent calls you, I just heard our superintendent's highly effective, which I 1,000% agree with. Trust and support with the four of us and our two assistants, what our maintenance department, what our transportation director, what our food director has been given the job to do by Mrs. Vance. I'll just be blunt, sometimes it's not there. That trust isn't felt, that support definitely isn't felt at times. Um, that's what I ask from you. If I can feel that, I feel like I can move mountains with the staff relationships that I'm building in the first nine weeks. But if it's not there, it's really hard to make tough decisions when you think one phone call to a board member is gonna put you in a pickle. So that's what I ask, is for trust and support. That's the number one thing I need from the school board. Thank you. Cassie? So, talking about amazing thing, um, I would say coming in as a first year principal and having to, uh, let's see, I wrote it down, we have 22 new teaching positions out of our 30 positions. And I say that to tell you that the amazing thing is our staff. It is amazing to see them do their job to walk around, see the students' faces lighting up every day, to see the camaraderie between all the new staff. I feel like we didn't just replace 22 or 30 teachers. Um, so they are amazing and kudos to them. And that's, you know, everybody. We have a lot of new IAs, we have a lot of new cafeteria, maintenance, our nurse, our secretaries. There's been lots of transition, but everybody really pulls together as a team. And that's what RMS has always been to me when I was there as a teacher and, and as administration. It's always felt like a team, and I'm very proud to say it still feels that way. What does COVID look like? When you see it, it looks like this. It looks like masks. It looks like social distancing. Our teachers have, again, done a really good job of being um, great at finding ways to be mask-free throughout the day and give those breaks so that students don't feel that fatigue as much. 
So that's what it looks like. What you can see, what you can't see is the stress, um, the extra work on the nurse, on the teachers, on the IAs, on the maintenance, on the cafeteria. Everybody has four stress in their job, as do you, because of COVID, so that's what you can't see. Um, anything the board should know? When I thought about that, I thought, I don't know that you know that, and I'm sure it's the same in the other buildings, but we haven't been fully staffed since I don't remember when. And we're still not fully staffed. So everybody every day is doing more than what they should have to. And they do it with a smile on their faces. How can the board help? Support, respect, respect one another, respect the people that you've hired to do the job, and support. Luke. Thank you. Um, amazing things that have been happening at Riddle. Um, the the one of the the biggest things is the team members staff stepping up. Like um, everybody's mentioned, short staff, but we're short on subs as well. So when we have a teacher that goes out, maybe for quarantine for an extended period or for whatever other reason, we we have people that have stepped into those teaching positions for two to three weeks at a time and have handled it magnificently. And then the grade level team step in to support them as well. So I mean, it's a trickle down effect, but that's the part that has amazed me the most with uh, the Riddle team is just those people stepping right into the classroom, the grade level team coming in and saying, okay, we've got this, and, and letting that person that may be sick or need to be with their family for a couple of weeks know that it's okay. They don't have to call in or email and check on their class. They know it's gonna be fine when they get back. That's been tremendous. Um, I want to thank everybody for their realignment efforts. I know at Riddle, it's been a huge boost. I love having the second grade team. I know Mr. Snyder can, can speak uh, very highly of the, the teachers that um, I inherited, I'll say, and I can't speak of, uh, highly enough of the teachers that, that went to the middle school as well. So that's what's made that the difference of making that a success has been the teachers and their willingness there was no dragging feet when we got started with the school year. Those teachers jumped right in and got on it. And it's like, like Mrs. Murphy saying, we haven't missed a beat. And we have plenty of new teachers and new positions at, at our building as well. So thank you to everybody for that. We've got more Title I programs, so I'm really excited. Um, let's see what your second question was. Uh, COVID looking, yeah, we, we talked about the mask, but since the adoption of the new policy with the state recommendation, uh, you heard Mrs. Vance speak today as far as how dramatically our quarantine students have gone down. At the beginning, before we were able to have this new policy, I know at Riddle, I'm averaging, I was averaging 75 kids a day that were quarantined, and now I'm less than 10. That's beautiful. The teachers love that. We love it. We want kids in the building. And so that, that's been uh, tremendously helpful, and it's taken a lot, I think, stress off of the teacher's plate, nurse's plate, front office all of that, those phone calls and contact tracing. Um, and I feel like we kind of got our, our footing now that once everybody's kind of adjusted, we figure it out, you know what, this isn't gonna, school year's not gonna be like how we thought it was gonna be. We kind of got our feet underneath us and we're ready to roll now. Um, yeah, and then just what I asked from the board is, is unity, you know, uh, to be unified as a board. You know, Mrs. Vance, we always talk about the herd, you know, it's really important that we stick together because if we start splintering apart or that scene, then people want to sneak in those cracks and, and, and sow that division a little bit even further. And, and I don't know if the other administrators have seen it, but I have seen it in my building where people feel like everything's splintered so they can come in and, and, and try to divide that further. And I, I don't want that to happen. I, I love Rochester. I love this community. You know, I wasn't born and raised here, but this is the first time I found a home. And it's very important to me, and I, I want that to be solid, and I ask for your support in that. Thank you. Okay. I'll uh, finish up in about uh, 45 minutes. <laughs> I've, got, I've got time in these cars. <laughs> now, I, uh, just, just to, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say a lot of things that, that you've already heard. Um, normally, Mrs. Vance has me go first on everything, so um, <laughs> so this time I don't. Everybody else got to say every, all the good stuff. But the bottom line is, is that what's really been good for the first nine weeks, she hit on it, and everybody else hit on it too. But it's been the staff 
Um, we have been without um, fully staffed the whole year, and um, we have been very, um, on average, eight to nine unfilled positions a day at times. Um, today we weren't at that, that level. But eight to nine people out of the building that we could not fill their positions with subs or somebody. And, you know, I can't do, I can't cover all of that. And I do cover a lot of those things. But the way that we covered those was um, by other staff members, other teachers, teachers being patient, helping other teachers out, um, shifting IAs. When a teacher sends an IA to cover a classroom, then they don't have the IA support that they, that they normally have. Um, I've actually had secretaries um, cover classes. Um, I mean, you name it, if you're working in Columbia and we don't have something filled, there's a good chance you might be covering that and helping that. And the thing is, is they do that willingly. When we send our emails out in the morning and we ask, we don't have this filled, this filled, this filled, Mel and I just get flooded with, I can do this at this time. And there are people who are giving up preps, people are giving up lunches, and they're doing that not because I'm telling them they have to, it's because they want to do what's right for those kids and they want to make sure that those kids get those experiences so we don't have to cancel classes and, and do things like that. So um, staff has been fantastic this first nine weeks. We couldn't have stayed open and done what we've uh, accomplished um, without just the teachers, the IAs, um, you know, our maintenance staff has stepped up and helped with supervision at times. Um, our nurse is constant, you know, we making phone calls, communicating with parents, uh, checking on kids. Um, and then, you know, our buses, um, getting the kids here, they've been down people. I've ridden the bus more this year than I have since I used to coach high school sports. And, you know, that's been just because of lack, and not because of driving, but because we, we have people that are on the buses um, and, and they're gone. And, you know, everybody has been affected by that. And the, the positive has been um, the, the work ethic and the selfless service of the staff members, I think in everybody's building and in the corporation, that's really stood out for me for the first nine weeks. Um, number two, uh, what COVID looks like, they've kind of explained it. Um, I will just say that our kids have adapted well, the teachers have adapted well. Uh, they've made some changes to programming so that we get uh, breaks in there. Um, but, you know, even before all this, we're still keeping the buildings clean. We've got extra cleanings going on. We've got hand washing times going on. Um, the kids are, are doing what we ask them to do uh, and they're having success in it. And uh, you know, they're, they're not coming in masked up for the entire day. Um, and, uh, and they're doing a fantastic job of that. Uh, one thing I'd like you to know, um, the realignment has had a very uh, positive impact in our building. Uh, for the first time, we've been able to have reading recovery rooms. So we're not having to do remediation out in hallways. Um, I can count on one hand the number of times that I've seen the kid out in the hallway um, with a staff member, uh, and that might just be for a two minute, you know, redirect or something, but everybody's working in designated spaces. We've got room for the kids to go and, and work um, outside of the classroom and not in the hallways. Um, our physical therapy has a class, has a room that they can actually work with people in private. Um, all of our kids eat in the cafeteria for the first time since I've been here, uh, and, and it's been that way for Long before I was there, we had evening classrooms and things. Our whole school body is able to go through and have that experience. Um, you know, we've got um, an after-school room that's dedicated to our after-school program. Although during the school day, we utilize it as a reading recovery room. Our after-schools always had to bounce back and forth. And in the morning times, if you ever saw it, um, all of our kids would come in uh, from that, that uh, back wing and they would just go sit in the hallways until, until school started. And so it wasn't the best environment. Now they have a room, they have a place, they can go in, they're playing their games, they're working on their homework, uh, and it's a dedicated space for that. Um, so I would say that, uh, uh, you know, thank you in, in the foresight of um, the restructure and the positive impact that has had on uh, not only our students, but also our staff as well. And then, 
the things the, uh, that you could help with, uh, you know, I look, I look back over since from the time that I've been at Columbia, and we're a better school um, uh, in a lot of ways um, than, than we were five or six years ago. And a lot of that, and, and most of it, is stems from the board's efforts and work um, in, in Mrs. Vance's um, leadership in getting our air conditioning uh, units. That, I mean, might seem like a minor deal, but that has had a huge impact in our building and, uh, and has really helped out. Um, the, the carpet has, has changed the complexity in the air and the, and the, you know, I mean, you wouldn't think much of it. The carpet had a, that was some old nasty carpet that we had in there. Um, the restructure, uh, the, the raises that we just recently had pushed through for our hourly teachers, I can't tell you the enjoyment and the benefit of walking up and telling a, a, a staff member that they just got a raise and, um, and how that has impacted um, hiring and getting people into the corporation and things. So um, we had a lot of really good stuff going on and uh, we continue to do that and that all, all starts up at, at your guys' level. Um, writing policy is not easy. Enforcing and implementing policy is not easy either. Um, so I just ask for support in uh, our efforts. I'm not perfect, uh, nobody in this room is, and uh, I will make mistakes. Um, when I make a mistake, I would like to know about it, uh, and I would like for Mrs. Vance to be the one to have that discussion with me, um, and you know, understand that people will make mistakes. Uh, we don't ever intentionally want to uh, do something uh, wrong or uh, that, that the board wouldn't approve of. But I guess it just goes back to what we try to teach our kids at Columbia. I mean, that's the golden rule and treat people how you want to be treated, even if you don't agree with them, even if you don't support a belief or an idea that they have. Um, you know, Tim McGraw says be humble and kind and I try to, try to live by that. So uh, I think that's good advice for anybody, not just the school board, Anybody listening or anybody in this room, we can, we can have differences in views and opinions and um, communication and, and even just positive communication, even when you don't agree, uh, tends to result in a lot better um, uh, results. And uh, that's it. That's all I've got. So. Superintendent business? No, I just want to thank the team and, and those that are here. I know we've got some members from RCTA. Just want to thank my team uh, from Todd to Amber to Scott and, and on back through Molly just joining the team and Mrs. Jolly and Mrs. Weaver and their help and support with the RCTA and, and Beth with um, the nurses. Just thank you all. It was we were in for nine weeks. We were able to attend every single day and I think that's a testament to the crew setting there and just um, are on track to continue to be successful this next nine weeks. So thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, you all that are working here with our students are making such lemonade out of the lemons we were given. I, I was really touched when Luke said this is not what, how we thought the year was going to go, but we're moving forward. And that's, I think, a common feeling that's what has hit at least in our home I was so hopeful that it would be different this year and so I think like in many phases of grief you have to come to the realization that it isn't and the way our staff has pivoted to help support our students and our community is amazing and I know that being understaffed is not unique to us but it still is extremely hard. And I hope that it was a restorative break. I'm thankful for the people who work intercession. I totally understand that it would not have been the easiest assignment to have because everybody needed a break. So I hope there's some restoration there and rejuvenation and that the next nine weeks is even better and that we can continue on that, that positive trajectory. So thank you all for presenting tonight too. And with that, if there's any more business? Update on negotiations, how's it going? Are we, I'm, I'm Our next see. negotiation uh, meeting is Wednesday evening after school starting around 3.30 when everybody can be free and get here. And um, we're having uh, 
good discussions there as negotiations are. It's give and take, and, and so far I think it's been very productive. I just want to share that um, last week uh, Casey and I and Mrs. Vance went to the uh, Indiana School Board Convention and uh, uh, we actually all ended up at all of the same sessions on governance and leadership which I felt was the thing I most needed to go to and we got lots of good information. Some of the best conversations you have are when you're outside of the meeting and you just talk with other people. We ran into a a, a couple of folks from Fort Wayne Community Schools, and we've we've had our our problems. We've had our problems, and as a first year board member coming in in January, this has been this has been tough. Um, not what I expected at all. Um, you know, I've had days when I walked out of here not sure what my next step was, and I'm sure everybody who's gone through this COVID thing is feeling the same way. But we were speaking with a, this lady from. Fort Wayne community and I said well how many how many buildings do you have and she said I can't even tell you and I thought how lucky we are we have four buildings now there's that's a double-edged sword though because we're in a small town everybody knows everybody it's easier for people who know a board member personally and in this small town there's a lot a lot of that to call one of us our first step is I, I just call Jana and say this is what I've got and I hopefully step out of it you know sometimes the people are related to me and they come to my house and they say hey mom <laughs> which is a little bit hard and uh, and I say okay thanks you know I don't I don't say I'm gonna fix it or I'm gonna make it go away or anything like that I say okay okay you know thanks for your information but but it is hard where we sit and I'm not making excuses it's been really hard for me personally um, but hearing from people from other corporations where people have brought guns to school board meetings where they've had to go completely virtual because they couldn't get their business done because of the interruptions from the crowd um, we're blessed that we are in a situation where we we do trust each other um, I have complete faith in every principal here um, you know I know your job is hard I know your job is hard and it's really hard when you have to worry about what other people are thinking and you know you guys were hired to do the job so please understand that of course you're gonna make mistakes you wouldn't be if you weren't doing anything people people who don't make mistakes don't do anything then they can't make mistakes people who are trying to do stuff make mistakes and that includes myself as a board member and I won't speak for the rest of them but um, I just want you to know that we want what you want and that is healthy happy successful kids that's it that's that's the goal whole healthy happy successful kids the business of running a school is uh, running a corporation is her job the business of making policy not easy especially in these times so I appreciate Jason that you you mentioned that it, it's been there have been some days but um, I am grateful that you all spoke up though it does help us to to know where you are and what's going on and thank you for attending that conference it's uh, it's a time commitment it was over our fall break um, but, but is a very valuable conference to go to one piece of advice, if you go to Buca de Beppo, do not order three <laughs> entrees for <laughs> It sounds like a carb coma. It was crazy. <laughs> crazy. Okay. Alright, well then we will go ahead and adjourn the meeting. Thank you all for coming.